House of Pounding Flesh, House of Pounding Wings, House of Pounding Hearts. All of my Patreon. Oh God. You're incredibly intrusive. Like I'm halfway through book two and like the, the main couple haven't even kissed. So this is one of the first Illumicrate books that I ever got. Why was I talking? So just before we get into this week's vlog, I would like to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is of course the wonderful book of the month. If you guys are unfamiliar with book of the month, which I'm, I'm sure you're not by now, but we'll give you a little bit of a recap. Book of the month are a monthly book curation service where they put together a selection of five to seven titles every single month across a range of genres. And you can pick up one for a bargain price to be delivered directly to your door. Book of the month pretty much have a book for absolutely everyone. Their genres span literary fiction, contemporary historical they do have a lot of debut authors they do magical realism fantasy romance i feel they're especially known for having really good thriller picks and if you find that there's nothing for you that month there's nothing you want to pick up you do also have the option to skip so i'm going to be sharing with you my two personal favorites of book of the month's march picks and they are they're interesting you know they're ones outside of genres that i would usually go for but there's just something about them that makes me want to give them a try. The first one is the one in the blue box which I think is new packaging from Book of the Month and I really like it but this one is a historical fantasy which is The London Silent Society by Sarah Penner. This one I believe is the same author as The Lost Apothecary and it is set in the late 1800s in Victorian London where two women from Paris are summoned to London to solve a high profile murder. I believe there were two main characters in this book. One of them is a spiritualist that performs seances and one of them is a young woman who has traveled to Paris to find out some information about her sister's death. And then my second pick is Magical Realism or Fabulism I believe which is Wayward by Amelia Hart. This one had a little bit of an earlier UK release so I've been eyeing it up for a while but I love the US cover of this. So this one is set in three time periods. One of them is 2019, one's the 1940s and one is the 1600s and I think the thing that they all have in common is that they all take place in the same location. So the one in the 1600s is focusing, I think, on witchcraft and witch hunts. In 2019, the main character is fleeing an abusive relationship. And in the 40s, the main character is trapped in her family's estate while World War II rages around them. So those are my two book of the month picks for March. These are really interesting because I, I do feel like there's great potential for me to love both of these, but they are just very slightly outside of my comfort zone. They're like on the periphery of my comfort zone. So if you guys would like to get your hands on any of these or explore the rest of book of the month's March picks if you click on the link right at the top of my description box and enter the code Becca at checkout you can get your very first book of the month which is a brand new hardcover release for just $9.99 so please run don't walk <laughs> to take me up on this offer and a big thank you to book of the month for sponsoring this video hello welcome to a week where we are going to try and read some of the books that are actually on my February TBR, which could be difficult <laughs> because, well, for many reasons. We'll start with, I don't know where to start with this vlog, okay. I guess we'll start with one of the books that I'm currently reading, which is slash was my bedtime ebook, but I've been having a bit of anxiety at night time over the last week or so. So I've been watching an episode of Love is Blind in bed instead because it gives me like that kind of mindless entertainment that sucks me in that helps me forget my anxiety but I am reading House of Pounding Hearts by Olivia Wildenstein which is the sequel to House of Beating Wings which I read for my 24 hour readathon with my patrons this month so I am 86 out of 519 pages into this. I'm enjoying it a lot now that I'm not doing the Goldsboro vlog anymore I'm very excited to continue on with that and devote a bit more of my time to it. So that one I will link the 24 hour readathon vlog if you want to see my experience reading the first one but this is the sequel, the second book in what I assume is going to be a fantasy romance trilogy that is set in a world where there is a very clear caste system between fae and humans and then we have half fae in the middle which are also kind of treated badly but nowhere near to the extent that humans are. So our main character is in love with 
a prince. She is half fae, but in a really weird way. Like the setup for this isn't the best and the beginning of the first book isn't the best. But she is a half fae girl who is looked down upon by the nobility. Her family is actually quite high up. Like they are an important family, but they were cast aside when the main character's mother was pregnant because the girl, like the main character is half fae. So her grandfather is actually a general who is very close to the king and some for some reason she ended up going to this prestigious school where she became friends with the prince so she's in love with him he went to war like was it four years before the start of the story he was her first kiss her first love he's come home and she's hoping that they can be together even though he's the prince and she's half fae so it's probably not gonna happen there is also this other guy who's kind of into her who's her friend and he is a don't think he's a fisherman i think he's more of like a, a river tradesman so he moves goods along the river and one day when she joins her friends at a party where the humans live are you coming up boy are you coming come on hey there he is so one day she joins her friends at a party on the human side of the river and she is told by an oracle that one day she will be queen so she takes this to mean that she will rule beside the prince that they're going to get married and he will be king and the oracle tells her that she has to find five or six iron crows to be able to realize this prophecy so she goes along with it thinking that this is going to end with her marrying this this prince. I enjoyed the first book so much after I'd gotten into it a little bit because like I said it was a rough start that I went straight into book two afterwards and it starts up pretty much straight after book one finishes so I am having a good time with that. I just to be honest I haven't been reading the most and I was trying to get through the gods of vlog and get that done um so that was my priority but I am excited to move that more to the forefront and I think like especially for the rest of today that is all I'm going to be reading but I do there's two books that I could really Really do with finishing or starting and finishing in February and the first one of those is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark which I'm reading for Jessie's book club. Jessie has actually just changed their YouTube channel so they were formerly Bowties and Books and I just saw a post today that they've changed their channel to Jessie on YouTube but they are the host of the MB book club and I'm going to be a co-host for that book club for March where we are going to be reading the sequel to this but I haven't read the first book yet so this is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, which I don't know if I told you this one's the Illumicrate edition and it is about a soldier who has been were well, they forcefully drafted into the army and they've been sent as part of the army to the town that they grew up in but to quash a rebellion and the main character is having mixed feelings about this because obviously they're from this place so they don't want to kill anyone but also the army that they're loyal to is has like a certain set of orders um there is another character who i think is oh yeah she's trying to win back the throne i haven't heard much about this one you know i feel like what i have heard is good but back in like when this was released it was the unbroken she who became the sun and the jasmine throne were like the three illumicrate books that went back to back and i feel like i heard a lot more about the other two than i heard of this one and thinking about it no actually i really want to read she who became the sun so in terms of illumicrate books that have come out in the last like year or so this is one of the ones that i'm most excited for and yeah i'll crack this one open tomorrow hopefully i like it because i feel like especially looking at my favorites over the last year there's been a lack of fantasy in there although a lot of strong fantasy four stars right now house of pound and flesh no no it's not called that i need to stop with that for now house of pounding hearts and then the unbroken and those are going to be my hopefully my first two books of this vlog and not my only two books of this vlog but i've just finished sprints with my patrons i've just finished the goldsboro vlog and i'm gonna go get a 45 minute workout in before dinner snapped out of whatever that was went to bed i said let's go to bed um i'm just scared that the longer we wait just the harder things are going to be on me physically to have kids. Zero recollection whatsoever. Oh my god. 
and that, my guys, is all of my Patreon. Oh God, let's try again. That is all of my Patreon February bookmarks. Holy hell, it used to be, not very long ago, I used to be able to hold it all in one hand. I, I don't know what happened. Oh my, that is so many, that is so many. You old bin boy, what are you doing? Hmm? So I'm currently editing last week's vlog, which is the Goldsboro vlog and Curtis has just gone out for a walk with Brie and I'm getting really frustrated now with my injury. Oh my god Hamilton what are you doing? I mentioned it briefly in the Goldsboro vlog I don't think I, I spoke about the resolution. Essentially once again I've never had a good experience with the NHS in the last like 10 years. I called 111 about my foot and they said they'd refer me for a GP callback which I mentioned in the Goldsboro vlog. The GP never called me. I waited two days and then I went to the minor injuries unit in Beverly where I was there for about 15 minutes which to be fair wasn't an urgent matter. And it's called the urgent care unit now. It used to be minor injuries where they treat minor injuries as well which is what I have. Oh my god, sir, there is no space for you here. So the good experience I had is that I was there for 15 minutes instead of triaging me and then making me wait to see a consultant. She just brought a consultant straight in because she thought it was a quick matter. The consultant felt my foot for like all of 15 seconds and it pretty much says there's no break there. It's just soft tissue pain. It will sort itself out. And I was like, yeah, but what can I, can I, do I rest it? Can I walk? Like, can I exercise? Like, what is the deal? Like, how do I recover from this? Hamilton, please get off my keyboard. I'm not a cat girly. I love my cat, but generally speaking, I'm not a cat girly. I find them incredibly intrusive. You're incredibly intrusive. So now, anyway, I'm in, can I just go hands-free with this? I'm in this situation now. Is this by any chance happening because you are sat all up in? Get off me, get off. He's just stepping all over the keyboard when my vlog's open that I've been editing and he's just fucked up a whole ton of stuff because of course he has, you stay here. But yeah, I'm in this position. Like I can't walk Brie because I can't walk very far without it hurting, which the, the wild thing about this is that I actually injured my foot going on for four weeks ago now. The beginning of next week, it'll be four weeks ago, I dropped a PlayStation controller on top of it and it was going fine and then I rolled my ankle a little bit and it started hurting again and it was going fine and then I dodged out of the way of Hamilton who was trying to wind around my legs and then it started hurting again and now it's like I can't walk very far without a very very far is relative you know like I can walk around the house no problem but if I tried to walk to the bottom of the garden and back by the time I got back it would be starting to hurt I can spin without it really hurting but should I be spinning should I be putting that much pressure on it so I don't I don't know what to do because she didn't give me a timeline for it or anything she literally said it's soft tissue pain it'll sort itself out so I'm pretty much in the condition that I was in before I even saw anyone where um I have an injury I know it's not incredibly serious but I don't know what to do about it so yeah I'm off I did do a spin workout last night and then I thought that I probably shouldn't so so I'm gonna do 30 minutes of core in about half an hour. I'll do half an hour of editing, do half an hour of core, and then I'm done with work for the day. But then tomorrow I'm gonna do like half an hour of upper body exercise or something that really stops me from having anxiety on a daily basis and especially cardio. So while weights do the job, while I enjoy strength training, I it's the cardio that brings me joy. The weights I see progress, the cardio brings me joy. And without the cardio, I can turn into a little bit of a wreck, especially because we all know I have issues with PMS as well, which I have an appointment for on Tuesday, which I'm kind of excited about, but then I'm like gaslighting myself because my PMS hasn't been as bad this month. I'm like, but is it even real though? So yeah, I, that was a big health update that you didn't need. In terms of reading, 
Curtis is out playing football tonight, so I'm going to spend all night reading and playing football, but I'm not sure actually if I'm going to be reading two books at once. I think I've changed my mind. I think I might try and finish House of Pounding Wings. No, Hearts. <laughs> Before I move on and start anything else, which obviously The Unbroken is the priority, but I don't feel like I'm reading enough right now for it to be worth splitting my attention across two books. So we'll just carry on with House of Pounding Hearts, which I'm already like, a bit of the way through, I'm like 20% of the way through. And if I start to feel sluggish with that, then I will pick up The Unbroken, I guess. have just had some lunch and I have also just hit the 50% mark in House of Pounded Hearts which I'm I still have the same kind of issues with it that I had with book one the writing sometimes like the choice of words questionable and also the like there's a lot of moving parts and I don't feel like they're integrated into the story I guess as well as they could be but then I'm also not enjoying it any less than I was before like I'm still really into the story um and I'm still having a really good time with it I really like the world in here and like I guess I like the plot the the story in general is something that's not entirely alien or new to me um it's given a little bit of like throne of glass plated prisoner Fortuna Swan. So it's not something that I've never read before, but it is like a, a story structure, I guess, that I do really enjoy. The only thing that's kind of like getting to me right now <laughs> is that I want the romance to progress a little bit because it makes sense why there's no real romantic progression within like the main relationship of this story in book one given the circumstances but now like I'm halfway through book two and like the the main couple haven't even kissed it's kind of a situation where like he's not even like actively pursuing her which is fine but she it just talks about how much she hates him and it's not even like she finds herself like mesmerized by his eyes and then is like oh wait no I hate him even though she is obviously denying the fact that she doesn't actually hate him so it's not like I don't feel like we're getting enough one-on-one -on -one moments with those two but when we are they're too short they're not progressing to the extent that I would like them to but then that being said I do like I like sexual tension and the lead up to a couple becoming a couple than I do the actual relationship becoming a relationship or being a relationship I guess but then I don't feel like there's the most sexual tension here either so I have a pretty boring weekend ahead of me I think so I'll definitely have this done I want to say by the end of the weekend although because I've said that probably Probably not but ideally I guess I would finish it tomorrow I mean it's only 12 30 which I thought it was later in the afternoon than that so um I have plenty of today left <laughs> to get some reading done my plans for the weekend is I may potentially strip some wallpaper in the bedroom tomorrow we'll see how I feel because I want to make some progress in the bedroom but I also hate stripping wallpaper do you guys have those activities that your parents gave you when you were a kid and because of that because you hated them as a kid you hate them now like mine is stripping wallpaper because my mum would do this thing where she'd say I want a change and then decorate a room in a day with my dad but I would be the one stripping wallpaper and also weeding so you will never find me in the garden and if you if I'm stripping wallpaper you know it's because I need the job done because otherwise like would not be seen dead but yeah I might strip some wallpaper on Saturday and I know on Sunday Curtis is watching like he's going out watching some sort of cup final which I think is Manchester United and Newcastle um and I have a like the four horsemen live show with my patrons so potentially plenty of reading time there depending on how deep into the wallpaper stripping I get tomorrow if it even happens but yeah today my only reading Real goal is to finish editing this Goldsboro vlog which I only have 36 minutes left of footage to go through which is pretty good. I started off with over two hours of footage of this but a lot of it was b-roll that has been edited right down thankfully and then I'm gonna go to I've got my arm workout I think I'm gonna do 20 minutes chest and back and 20 minutes arms and shoulders and I'm also gonna go to Tesco because Curtis is eating out on Sunday I think he's gonna get Domino's and I'm gonna make cheddar and broccoli soup which is a recipe 
recipe that one of my patrons, Dev, gave me yesterday. So I wanna go get the ingredients for that because I always want to do something like I always wanna cook on Sunday or bake or something and I never have what I need in. So I'm gonna go out and get that today. And I have a live show with my patrons, my Inner Circle and Cadre live show at 9 p.m. tonight. So yeah, that's what I've got going on. I'm hoping that my foot's gonna start getting better. I don't wanna test it because if I walk on it a lot and it starts to hurt then I've already fucked it and set myself back but I was given no direction on how long to rest it for so I don't know at what point it's supposed to be able like I'm able to go outside and walk on it so I'll drive to Tesco <laughs> see if I can walk around Tesco all right and then um yeah i guess we'll take it from that this is frustrating i hate being injured so today's project is going to be glossing all of this casing for the doors that we have put in like over a year ago and then if i have time i'll do the doors as well which i've actually been putting these off since they were put in because of the sheer amount of masking tape that i need for this job we died. It's just an artistic b-roll shot playing our Campora of which we still not have completed the first campaign. No actually isn't the first part of the first campaign. Yeah. How'd you feel? So, just bad. Oh, it's just unlucky. It's this thing. Bag of chaos. It's the bag of chaos. Good morning guys. I am back in my painting clothes today because I only managed to gloss the frame of the door yesterday. I passed off the activity of masking all of the little windows in the doors off to Curtis because he is much more precise and much more patient than I am and by the time I'd finished glossing the frame he was only like halfway through doing the doors. So I have all of that to do this afternoon. I've kind of like bit enough more than I can chew for this Sunday but all of it is like really like there are activities that I'm going to enjoy. So I had to finish my book, which I've done and I'll tell you about in just a second. I have to proof my vlog to go up later today. I then need to make pancakes because we have like leftover buttermilk and stuff and I obviously like don't wanna waste it. I wanna make use of it. So then I'll be making pancakes for lunch and then I have to gloss the two doors. I have a live show like the Alpha Ho Book Club live show with my patrons for the Four Horsemen series because I make a book diary for each individual book and then we do a live show when we get to the end of a series. So I have that at 4 p.m. and then I'm making my broccoli soup tonight. So it's a lot of activities but it's all activities that I'm really gonna enjoy and I'm like, wow, you really did like plan to cram a lot into this Sunday but I have finished House of Pounding Hearts which I nearly said flesh again but it's House of Pounding Hearts and I gave it a low four star which is pretty much the same as I gave House of Beaten Wings. In terms of writing and I guess like narrative construction and plot structure it's not the best thing i've ever read it's truly truly not i thought that the romance was dragging on like it was taking a long time to actually get into the romance and then the point where like we did finally get into that felt very sudden and abrupt to me but generally even though everything isn't assembled in in a the perfect way. I really enjoy the characters. I really enjoy the world. I really enjoy the story. I really enjoy the romance. The romance is very, as I've said before, plated prisoner, Fortuna Swan, given a little bit of a coat of mist and fury like um, everything is to be fair these days. We're essentially just in this world that is divided by species and you have the Shabans who are like sorceresses, but they were banished like hundreds of years ago. And then you have the crows who were 
eradicated hundreds of years ago and the world pretty much belongs to the Fae. But the Fae are quite um, judgmental and also, what's the word? Like the opposite of progressive in the way that they set out their country. Like women aren't allowed to join the army even though there's plenty of other places around the world that allow women in the army. And they're also very harshly segregated between like Fae, half Fae and humans and they're like oppressing any class that isn't like pure-blooded Fae, which is a recurring theme throughout the world, but there are other species that have been kind of like forgotten by time because the Fae overthrew them and have painted them as the bad guys in this struggle. It was four stars. I do really enjoy it. It's kind of an addictive read, but it is by no means the perfect book. But if you are a fan of like Plated Prisoner, Fortuna Swan, and you're looking for a new fairy romance, would recommend that you pick this one up. I mean, I have fluff in my eye. I picked this one up like directly after finishing the first book in the 24 hour refund that I did with my patrons, which shows how much I enjoyed it because it's rare for me to want to go into a sequel straight after finishing book one. And to be honest, I would have gone into book three immediately if it existed, but um, the release date for that is currently June. Although on Amazon, it says don't pay attention to the June release date because it's going to come out sooner, but I have no idea when that's going to be. So um, I probably won't be reading until this evening because I've, I've given myself a lot of things to do today. But when I do, I will be picking up the Unbroken. I mean, how many days of the month do we have left? Including today, we have three and this is a 488 page book uh, 486 because two pages are acknowledgements so I'm not overly hopeful that I'm going to be getting through this by the end of the month but I'm definitely going to give it a try because if I could squeeze I mean I ideally would like to squeeze this into the month to stay on track because I'm already obviously not going to get to the blade itself it's not a massive deal if it does go over into March but I would like to I need to focus on my TBR actually so that is the theme for the rest of this week and also the beginning of March is going to be catching up on all of the things that I should have read in February but instead I read um <laughs> fantasy romance on Kindle Unlimited I will put the recipe for this. It's like a, a Panera copy recipe of like, we don't have Panera in the UK, so I have no idea. Um, but it's a copy of like Panera broccoli and cheese soup. I did make a substitution though, because it wanted me to put, I think two cups of cream in. So in the pan, I put an entire head of cauliflower, left it for like 15 minutes with the lid on. And when the cauliflower was really soft, I put it in the blender and had blended cauliflower instead of cream, which is a substitute that I normally use for cream because obviously it saves like 200 calories <laughs> in the recipe. Um, but yeah, that's really good and I'm gonna go eat it. babies i'm coming in with a little monday morning outfit of the day i'm actually not going anywhere today i do plan on filming at least two videos though i'm hoping for maybe three 
we'll see how it goes. Don't know what that third one would be, but I guess we'll find out. These are a pair of trousers that I bought from Primark a while ago and I didn't like them when I bought them. I have lost quite a bit of weight, so I don't know whether it's just like the fit of them, but they're very, I think it's the color because like if we zoom in, this is very me. This, not so much. So um, I do like this outfit though, because this is actually an oversized uh, shirt dress. So it goes like all the way down here, but for this outfit with the pants, I tied it up and I think that the shirt is from either Boohoo or Nasty Gal. But yeah, this is the outfit of the day for filming, which um, I'm gonna go and get on with. Good afternoon. I have filmed a fair few videos this day. I started this morning, um, I say a fair few, it's literally a few because it's only one more than two. I filmed three videos today, but it's weird because like they set off a chain of events that you guys are only gonna really see <laughs> as you watch the videos. But because the way I pre-film is I film every other video if I'm doing it in one session, because then I don't have to get changed. And then on Wednesday, which will be my next filming session when I film my wrap up, I'll film every other video that goes in between the ones that I filmed today so that the thumbnails are varied, I don't have to go and get changed. So there is a chain of events that has unfolded in the videos that I filmed today that aren't gonna make sense for a while. And one of the videos, like the video that I just pre-filmed, I don't know if you're gonna see it in March or May. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be proactive around filming, but also like there's such a thing as being too proactive. But I just, the video that I just filmed is kind of like a backup one. So if I'm late with a vlog or anything, I already have something prepared instead of having to come up with something. But anyway, the first epiphany I've had today because I have had a few, but the first one is that I need to read. I need to read a lot. I can't take the unbroken into March with me. We have two days of February left. I just filmed my March TBR. And when I tell you it is horrifying, in a good way, like <laughs> if such a thing can be, like I'm really excited to read all of the books. We have some five-star predictions in there, but I just don't know if if I can, like it's, it's a thick TBR. So I need to get a wriggle on. I need to get some reading done. The second video that I filmed led me to want to read a book as soon as possible, which I am about to start. And then um, that kind of led into the third video that I filmed, which actually that one was more of a coincidence. Oh, hi, you can't even see me. I am putting my books away from the video that I've just filmed, which is why I'm strolling around while I'm talking to you. But essentially, like I said, there is such a thing as being too proactive when you're pre-filming content. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to film that last video, but like I said, I thought it was better to have something in the bag instead of potentially having to scramble and put something together last minute. So if you see it in May, you see it in May. It's a good video regardless. I enjoyed making it. Don't get excited. It's nothing too out there. It, it's just, it's just a video, you know? <laughs> Don't expect anything of me. I crumble under pressure. Why was I talking? Oh, okay. I understand. <laughs> I remember. I was unsure whether I wanted to film that video because there is such a thing as being a little bit too proactive. But I decided to do it and I've, I've got three videos done before. It's not even 2 p.m. yet, so I'm real happy with that. But now I'm gonna get changed and let me put this back in my TBR. I'm going to gloss the doors because yesterday I finished priming them because it takes a while with all of the individual paints of glass that I have to go around, which is driving me wild. Um, but I ran out of time because when I'd finished priming them, it was, I think, quarter to three. And I had a live show at four. So by the time I'd cleaned up from the primer and got the glossing equipment out, bearing in mind the fact that I would have to clean up from the gloss. And I had a live show at four, I didn't have time. So they're primed and I need to gloss them. And I'm almost up to date on Morbid. I'm not up to date on the rewatcher, but the second video that I filmed today made me really want to read a specific book. So I'm gonna pop the audiobook on. And that book is Sanctuary by V.B. James. So this is one of the first Illumicrate books that I ever got. And I really, really wanna read it, but I've just never really like picked it up or thought about picking it up. But after filming that video, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it now. So I'm gonna get the audio book for it. Please don't sit on my special edition of The Diviners. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna get the audio and listen to it while I gloss doors. So it is a, it's a thriller, which is why I never like automatically reach for it. But it is set in a small town and the star quarterback dies and it all seems like a tragic accident. But then rumors start about his ex-girlfriend who is the daughter of a witch. So because it's an Illumicrate book, I believe that there is actually a fantastical element in here. And it does say at the back, there is a disclaimer that's 
obviously is that the magic system is fictional and not Wicca. But then because of it being a thriller and also because it is, oh, it's not. Okay, I thought it was all, oh no, it is. It's in first person. So a thriller, a first person thriller, I'm a picky audiobook listener, but a first person thriller is something I can get behind. So yeah, I'm gonna go get changed, which is sad because I look so good today, but I'm gonna go get changed and put my painting clothes on. I'm going to gloss for approximately two hours um, when I will get my 30 minute core workout in. And that's the plan. It is just gone midnight, so I'm about to go to bed and I don't have a whole ton of battery left on my camera. But I want you to let you guys know that I made it to 130, 128 pages into The Unbroken. So the likelihood is that I am gonna be carrying it into March. This took me a while to get into, but I feel like the last 40 pages or so, I've been enjoying it more and I actually feel like I, I care and know about what's going on now. I'll tell you a little bit more about what these are about, I guess, tomorrow. But Sanctuary, I'm 98 pages in. I listened to it a little bit while I was glossing the doors and I listened to it while I was making dinner. And excellent news, guys, because you know, I'm a picky bitch when it comes to audio. I can listen to a thriller, especially like a first person thriller, which is why I thought this would be a good fit. It's actually a full cast audio, so I'm having a good time with it. And generally it is the kind of audio book that I like to listen to. So I don't think I'm gonna finish either of them <laughs> tomorrow because I'm going to start editing all of the things that I filmed, starting with my TBR that's going up tomorrow. And then I think the next thing that's going up that I actually have filmed is this vlog. So I'll just crack on. And then if I get up to date with this, I have everything else that I filmed today that I can start editing and I have a doctor's appointment at five to five. So I doubt I'm gonna finish either of these, but at least we'll be going into March with, I mean, it's another two 500 page books, but at least we'll be going into March with them halfway-ish done. <laughs> Good morning, the first of today's videos is currently exploring. So while it does that, I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit more about my current reads. So the main one is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, in case you forgot what the cover looks like. And this one I'm 138 pages into. It is slow going, I feel. I, it took me a while to get into this because the writing is very stark, very matter of fact, and it feels very like straight to the point in a way that it, it, it just lacks, it doesn't lack description is the thing. It's just not descriptive enough for me to have been immersed in this instantly, but I am now at a point where like I'm enjoying it a little bit more. But I feel both of the characters are quite stark and cold i want to say which also then lends to the the struggle that i was having to get into it this is set in a world the aggressor in here which is the the country whose army terrain is a part of is very heavily inspired i would say from france and this story is very heavily inspired by colonialism and also racism which is very very apparent going through and also content warnings for sexual assault in here as well although as of yet nothing has happened on page it's just been talked about a little bit so this is set in a world where we have this aggressive country that is going to desert countries and civilizing them and like claiming them as its own and part of like they oppress the people from the countries that they're taking over and they also as part of a, a program that they were testing out they took a group of kids from one of the countries or like a variety of these countries and raised them as a an army unit but they don't get treated like there's still a lot of prejudice in the way that they're treated so they're not treated as full citizens even or like they're not offered the same privilege privileges as the people of Balada are afforded but they are a part of the army and they are expected to fight for this country so our main character terrain is a soldier who this has been done to 
do. And she very much believes in the ethos of this army. She believes that the country are doing a good thing. They're bringing money, power, influence and trade to these desert countries that were isolated and uncivilized previously. Now the plot of this is following or centering around a rebellion and the army has been sent to one of these countries and the there's a rebellion ongoing. So Terrain is very quickly accused of helping the rebellion for no other reason than she is originally from this place. And it's ironic because of all of the soldiers, Terrain is the one that most believes in, in the system that she's been kind of indoctrinated into. And she's actually the victim in this situation, but she's being painted as the bad guy and she's accused of murdering somebody. So our secondary character in here is a princess called Luca, who has gone to this country to try and quash the rebellion. Her uncle, I feel like her uncle's sitting as regent. She has a disability and she's seen as an unfit ruler, even though she is the rightful ruler of, um, I think she's the rightful ruler of Baladair. And she, because of her disability, she's kind of being disregarded and her uncle's refusing to give her the throne. So she has gone to quash this rebellion to kind of prove her strength. She enlists terrain to help her do this and work as a double agent or like a go-between between Baladair and the rebels. So that's pretty much like the focus of this plot. I'm very much assuming that everyone's gonna have kind of like a change of heart throughout here. Terrain's gonna realize that Baladair isn't all it's cracked up to be and that the rebels are probably in the right even though their methods may not be the best and um, I feel like Luca is going to evolve into this more fair ruler that stops oppressing the people of the desert cities. The writing, like I said, took me a while to get into, but as we move more into the story, I am getting into it a little bit more. I am, I just, everything does feel a little bit rigid and stark though. Like I'm very much aware the entire time that I'm reading this, that I'm reading a book. It's not providing that level of immersion where I'm really ingrained into the story, although it is starting to get there a little bit. So yeah, so far so good. I'm not loving it, but I'm not not enjoying it at all, really. Like I'm, I'm in Invested. I'm, I'm gonna see this through. So the other book that I'm reading, I'm really enjoying and it's very different than I expected it to be. I would never have expected this to be an Illumicrate book. If I picked this up and didn't have it as an Illumicrate edition, never in a million years would I think that this would be an Illumicrate book, but that is Sanctuary by Vivi James. Um, loving the full cast audio, but this is the town that this is set in is called Sanctuary and it is a small town thriller with a, a small element of magic. It follows the adults in this situation, which is what I wasn't expecting. So essentially there's this group of women, one of which is a witch, and they all live in this small town, and the other women provide this witch's coven. So they're not witches, but they lend the witch strength during her spells. Now this is very much giving big little lies. So while I'm saying witchcraft, don't think that it's overly fantastical. The atmosphere of this is predominantly like domestic small town thriller. And this group of women are very close friends, and one of their kids dies. So he's the star quarterback and his ex-girlfriend is the child, the daughter of the witch. And it starts out at this horrific accident. So all of the, the parents are together, all of the mothers are together and all of the kids are at a party and they get a call that this boy, I think he's called Dan, has died and there was a fire at the party. So everybody thinks like the fire is responsible. He fell off the landing. There was an accident that caused a fire and an investigator has been called in just because he's 18. He's really young so that it needs to have an explanation and it it needs to have a full investigation just to make sure that this boy died by accident. So everyone's saying that it is an accident even though it seems that there was an element of drama at this party until one of the boys in the group of kids goes to the police and says that the witch's daughter, or so this boy's ex-girlfriend, Dan's ex-girlfriend, killed him um, using witchcraft, which is impossible according to everybody else because this girl isn't a witch, like she doesn't actually have the gift of witchcraft, which is something that devastated her mother when they found out. So this is a multi perspective story. Going through the parents, I thought we'd focus on the kids, but it's the parents' perspectives that we're getting as this witch hunt begins, essentially, because this girl is being accused of killing her boyfriend. And the even though she's not a witch, there's no evidence to say that she's a witch. It's a very well-known fact that she didn't 
she, like her powers never emerged and it's something that's very well known amongst everyone in this town really but especially this group of women and as this woman who is mourning her child is in the throes of like that grief and that emotion she starts to turn on her best friend and what I feel like is gonna I'm only 19 pages into this but what I feel like is going to happen is a witch hunt is going to emerge where we see the influential and powerful people in this town i.e the mother of this dead quarterback starts to lead a mob against the witch who has like witches are well known in this world they live along science and technology and they have always existed but you have to register or like it's on your government file if you do possess witchcraft and what i feel like is going to happen is we're going to start leading this witch hunt against the witch based on very little evidence and just the heightened emotion of this one woman who now believes and this one boy i guess that now believes that this girl murdered the, the star quarterback so it has a little bit of fantastical elements in there but it is very much given like small town thriller as the overarching like theme of this and i'm having a really good time with it so far the audio book is is full cast in that it alternates between like every perspective has a different narrator and i think yeah i'm pretty sure that there is like within the chapters because one of the things i didn't like about the aurora cycle by j christoph and amy kaufman when i listened to the audio is that the narrator of the chapter would do the dialogue for the other character instead of getting the other characters to do their dialogue and inserting it in but that this doesn't do that it is told in first person so the dialogue isn't like the most throughout here but there are like interview segments and stuff where we have like different narrators coming in to voice the different characters instead of it being just like solidly the narrator of that one chapter so yeah i'm having a really good time with the audiobook of this one and i am getting on with this one i'm having i'm getting into it now so both very big books one 460 pages one 480 so i'm definitely not going to be finishing them today um but i mean progress is is good so far good eve it is 11 p.m on this day the 28th of february and i'm just sorting out the sofa and everything and getting ready to go to bed when i realized that i should probably wrap up this vlog because we're done we were running it till the end of february so i did give you guys a pretty extensive update on my reading this morning so i don't feel like i need to do that again i did make i didn't finish anything as we all expected. I made it to around page 125 in Sanctuary today and I'm currently on page 140-ish. Oh no, I'm not. 160-ish of The Unbroken. I'm gonna go and get in bed and read a little bit more of that. Sadly, it was not finished in February. <laughs> like i really needed it to be but we'll we'll be fine we'll play catch up in march we'll do the damn thing but next week is going to be another weekly vlog so please do stay tuned if you are at all interested but i do hope you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you made it this far if you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and i'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you Go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no